Oh, hi. Welcome back to another video. Let's chat about desire. And let's chat about this thing that we have when we go crazy over something, when we get really, really obsessed with something. You know, if I want to characterize my entire life, it would probably have to be a series of obsessions. When I work on a project, when I get obsessed with something, I typically get it done the very next day to see how things work. But life really works that way. And something that I've discovered recently is that the harder you push to get something, the less likely that you're actually gonna get it. The more I want something to do well, the more likely it is to fall apart. The more obsession that I put into something, people tend to get, should I say, repulsed by the sort of eagerness, the sort of neediness that you exhibit when you try to reach out, when you try to grab something that isn't yours. And about a year ago, I read something in this book, The Philosophy of Andy Warhol, which by the way, is not a philosophy book. It's just a autobiography. And I think half of this book was actually written by a ghostwriter, but I don't know. My friend Matt and I were basically talking about this idea of relationships or this idea of finding the partner of our lives. And I recently turned 21 and that was to me like a huge milestone. And I'm wondering to myself, why is this thing still happening? Why is it a case that even people well into their thirties are struggling with this thing called relationships. So we were talking about relationships and breakups, heartache, canada kind of good stuff. And something I read from this book really lined something up in my brain. And I'm gonna read it to you right now. When I'm working on a business project, I expect bad things to happen all the time. I always expect deals to fall through in the biggest, worst way possible. I guess I shouldn't worry though. If something's gonna happen for you, it will. You can't make it happen. And it never does happen until you're past the point where you care whether it happens or not. If you get things when you really want them, you go crazy. Everything becomes distorted when something you really want is sitting in your lap. And I think it's really important for us to talk about this reality distortion principle, because this to me is something so central to the theme of my life, which is obsession. I actually wrote down in my journal once, I'm like a shark, if I don't create, if I don't go out there and find something, inspiring if i don't get myself involved in situations that might spark the spark of creativity if i don't write something if i don't take photographs which by the way recently i started a photography account this is simply just a photo diary of sorts which you can check out link in the description what i've realized is that i have this problem of staying still everything in my life turns into art everything in my life turns into something that i can potentially turn into a creative project something that i can turn into something i can sell something that I can turn into something of value. And last night I took a trip back home and that's when I had some time to think. I took a bath, I read a little here and there, and I thought to myself, you know, when was the last time you've ever done anything for yourself? As a kid, I've always loved cameras. I've always loved photography, videography, and I've always loved reading and writing. And guess what that turned into? It turned into this entire career of mine. So nowadays, every day when I head out of the door, Whenever I read a book, whenever I see something, whenever I take a photograph or a video or something, that immediately turns into a commercial idea. That turns into a video idea I can shoot. That turns into something I can turn into something else. That's the real curse of being a creative or doing creativity professionally, is that everything in your life turns into simply, uh, they simply morph into ingredients for your next creative project. And when someone asks me, what do you do for fun? I can say reading, but when I'm reading a book in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, how can I turn this into a video idea? Over time, this lack of separation between work and life, in some way it's romantic. In some way it's very inspiring. You know, you're turning your life into a work of art, but on some level, that's just pathological. But recently, I've discovered something that sort of eased my nerves a little bit. And that's something I wanna share with you guys. And this thing is my, should I say, childhood desire to sketch things to sketch buildings, to sketch architecture, to sketch people, and to sketch, well, figures. So recently, I did a lot of research into the fashion industry, and fashion is something that I'm particularly interested in, so I found myself sketching in my sketchbook all kinds of sketches of fashion designs, of my own designs, or designs of other people, or people that I've admired. And for the first time in a history of my short-lived career, which is only just starting, I've realized that sketching might be the only art form that I'm currently doing for myself. It's something that's inherent within me that I can just take with me wherever I go. If I'm sitting down at a cafe, I just found myself sketching a bicycle that's chained to a pole. I found myself sketching a dress from a boutique from across the street. I referenced somewhere recently that the author basically said, a photograph is an immediate impression, whereas sketching or drawing 
is a meditation. In the age where everything is commercial, where when you can bake a really good cake, people encourage you to start a cake shop or whatever, when you know how to make a really good, should I say, a photo frame, or when you know how to paint a really good painting, people encourage you to turn that into a commercial venture. In the age of entrepreneurship, I think for us creatives, it's actually more important for us to find something that actually floats our boat. Because art, intimately, is connected to life. And if writing, and uh, videography and photography for me is my profession, then it's even more critically for me, I think, to find something else that's not immediately connected to this career of mine, something else that's also creative, something else that's also outside of this realm of my, my craft, so to speak, so I don't go crazy over this one craft that I'm currently focusing on. Because I know myself very well, if I get too far up my ass over a project, if I get too far up my ass over a video idea or a piece of writing or uh, a piece of creative project or a photography project, I typically end up going insane over it and nothing really good comes out of it. I end up producing crappy work and no one really wants to look at it. And yeah, it just turns into something no one really wants, not even me. Whereas that step back for me is very important. That step back into that zone where I'm just creating simply for myself. And my friend Hanna once asked me, when was the last time you've written anything for yourself? Just in a journal, I've realized that everything I write, I wrote with a kind of like an external gaze, gazing down upon my page. It's just like, this is gonna end up in your blog. This is gonna end up in a, in a collection somewhere five years down a track. And that's gonna end up, that photo right there, that's gonna end up in a, in a photo book somewhere 10 years down the road. That is the stress that Andy Warhol was talking about. That is what's gonna make you crazy. You know, especially in the creative world, everything, because life and art, if you're a full-time creative, life and art are so intimately connected that sometimes as creatives, we need an escape valve. And I would really encourage you guys to think about what that escape valve is for you because it's different for everyone. For me, is sketching. For me, is zoning out, just at a park, sketching buildings, trees, and people. For you, it might be something completely different. It might be drawing. It might be making pottery. It might be cooking a good meal. It might be baking a cake that you won't sell to people. And leave a comment down below for me. What is your escape activity? What is that activity for you that you can just do and zone out over? What is that for you? So really think about that. And I look forward to hearing from you. And then again, R.C. Walden here, and I will see you in the next one.